This is Mac OS Ken. The data set for Apple's first quarter earnings, guesses ventured by Loop Ventures, and three tales of Apple TV Plus. Four if you count the fourth one. It's Wednesday, the 5th of January, 2022. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Headspace. Meditation made simple. Get a free one-month trial at headspace.com slash macOSCan. This show is also sponsored by Upstart. Fair and fast personal loans. The new year is underway. If you'd like to spend it with less financial worry, you should check out Upstart. Whether it's a credit card balance hanging over your head, high interest debt, or other personal expenses, over a million people have used Upstart to get a simple, fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. That is Upstart, helping over a million people like you get out from under whatever's hanging over them. Upstart looks at more than just your credit score, factoring in income and current employment. You can check your rate without impacting your credit score in minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000, and you can receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash macOSCan. U-P-S-T-A-R-T, that's Upstart dot com slash mac os can don't forget to use my url to let them know i sent you loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application upstart dot com slash mac os can the financial minded among you have a date to circle On Tuesday, Apple updated its investor page with the date and time of its December quarter earnings call. The date is Thursday, the 27th of January. The time is 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. Apple did not offer guidance for the quarter on the last call, though it did offer color. Apple set records for the September quarter despite supply constraints that executives said cost Apple about $6 billion in revenue. They also said on that call that such constraints would be larger in the December quarter. Despite that harder squeeze, Apple said on the last call that it still expected to achieve very solid year-over-year revenue growth and to set a new revenue record for the December quarter. The company also expected revenue for each category to beat revenue for the same quarter a year earlier, iPad not included. Revenue for iPad was, and is expected to decline due to supply constraints. Growth for services was predicted to decelerate, though Apple CFO Luca Maestri said the category was expected to remain strong. A piece from Mac Rumors lists some of Apple's key contributors for the holiday quarter. The first quarter of fiscal year 2022 will mark the first full quarter of sales for the iPhone 13 line. It'll also include the earliest sales of MacBook Pros with Apple Silicon M1 Pro and M1 Max processors inside. Series 3 AirPods will also figure in. We heard about their contribution earlier this week from TF International analyst Ming-Chi Kuo. As for what to expect, earnings come in two parts. First, there's the release of data. Then there's the call between Apple execs and financial folks about half an hour later. Numbers are released on Apple's site after the close of trading, roughly 1.30 Pacific, 4.30 Eastern. Then the call kicks off at 2 p.m., 5 p.m., as stated earlier. You can stream it as it happens on Apple's investor site. The company will make it available as a podcast soon after. Twitters will tweet. Bloggers will blog. I'll cover highlights here the day after the call. And if you missed any of that, fear not... You will hear it a lot between now and the 27th. At least one analyst is seeing the slowdown in services growth anticipated by Apple's CFO. 
Philip Elmer DeWitt's Apple 3.0 ran part of a note from Evercore analyst Amit Daryanani on Tuesday. That note notes a notable slowdown for growth in the App Store. Quoting his note, App Store revenue slowed once again with the growth rate falling to 9%, which makes December the first month of single-digit App Store growth over the last 10 years. While the slowdown was expected, he and his figured growth would drop to between 10 and 15 percent, not 9. Still, the analyst says his team is comfortable with its forecast of 18 percent year-on-year services growth for the December quarter. Such a slowdown is the kind of thing that could freak investors out. Darianani is aware of that and seems set on trying to stop it. Quoting his note again, we would caution investors against reading too much into a single month, and it is important to note that App Store revenue was still up 20% for the year. This is consistent with our view that Apple's services business can maintain high teens growth over the next three to five years. On the upside, the analyst thinks near-term momentum for Apple will be driven by improving supply that could unleash upside to iPhone expectations in the December and March quarters. Darianani has an outperformed rating on Apple shares. His price target on the shares is 180 bucks. Spurred by Apple touching a market valuation of $3 trillion on Monday, Loop Ventures has posted a video to its YouTube channel reminiscing on Apple's past and considering the year ahead. Loop Ventures principal Gene Munster ropes in team members Andrew Murphy and Doug Clinton for the discussion. Murphy and Munster see the big surprise for Apple this year being the mixed reality headset they and others expect the company to introduce. Upon hearing that, my initial thought was, how could that be a surprise? Then I remembered all the people who buy iPhones in August of a given year, apparently oblivious to new iPhones on the way in 60 days or less. While we don't know everything about Apple's mixed reality what's it, it would be hard to call its announcement a surprise pretty much from now on. Then again, Munster and company point out that even though everybody knew Apple was about to announce an iPhone in 2007, it was still surprising when Apple actually made the announcement and the device itself was full of surprises. For his part, Mr. Clinton says the big surprise for 2022 will be intensifying talk of Apple Car. He's not looking for Apple to actually announce the car. He just thinks rumors will get hotter and heavier. I do not know on what planet that could be a surprise. As for the fate of Apple's shares, the Loop Venture site says shares of Apple will continue to move higher with a $250 price target based on 2022 investor euphoria in anticipation for two new product categories, Metaverse and Autonomy, that should increase the multiple on Apple. I'm back to wondering whether they know what the word surprise actually means. I will say while I have been following Mr. Munster for years, that following has mostly been reading what he's written. Seeing him in conversation on Loop TV was interesting. He tells a story about iPod's halo effect in action on him. He also pokes fun at himself for his years-long belief that Apple was going to release a full-on television. No, he does not still believe that's going to happen, but he asked Tim Cook for one anyway. That part is funny. It's a short discussion, about 12 minutes long. You can find Loop TV on YouTube. Munster and company are the only ones expecting mixed reality madness in 2022. TF International analyst Ming-Chi Kuo was calling for an AR-VR headset this year for much of last year. And not surprisingly, he is still there. 9to5Mac has young MC reiterating his belief in a mixed reality headset from Apple by late 2022. He is not expecting many of them, though. According to the analyst, according to the report, more significant shipments of the product won't begin until the first quarter of 2023, suggesting that the headset will arrive in stores with only a few units available for customers. 
Remember that tingly feeling you got ahead of iPhone? That sense almost of inevitability? I'm getting that again in ways I didn't ahead of iPad. I don't know that my expectations will be anything like reasonable until we finally get an announcement from Apple. Hopefully we'll get the same how could we be surprised surprise that Munster and the rest of us got off the iPhone and hopefully we'll get that this year. More news in a moment, but first a word from Headspace. Meditation made simple. New year, new you. Has there ever been a more hackneyed phrase? The thing is, though, turning the page on the calendar is often when people try turning over a new leaf. I did that last year with Headspace, and it made 2021 better. I've tried other meditation apps, and I was skeptical that Headspace could work for me. Try it, though, and you'll see. A few minutes each day can help you feel better, from dealing with stress to not being held back by anxiety to finding a place of calm when things seem to be spinning out of control. The SOS meditations are really great for that. The Headspace app on your phone or tablet makes it easy to learn and maintain a meditation practice that will improve your mood and help you feel happier. Anyway, it did for me. Find some Headspace at headspace.com slash macOSCan and get a one-month free trial of their entire meditation library. This is the best Headspace offer available, so go to headspace.com slash macOSCan today. Headspace.com slash macOSCan. Shazam thinks it knows what songs you'll be asking about this year. Mac Rumors says the Apple-owned music recognition service has shared its Shazam Predictions 2022 playlist, surprisingly, but not really, on Apple Music. The report says the playlist offers songs from 50 artists poised to have a breakthrough year. According to Mac Rumors, data was calculated through Shazam's predictive algorithms, and the tracks included were hand-selected by the Apple Music global editorial team. The songs show indicators of future growth, including early and consistent Shazam activity and discovery in more than one country. I know I'm a cynical so-and-so, but can it really be called a prediction if you're putting your thumb on the scale? In addition to the 50 tracks, Mac Rumor says Apple has highlighted the top five musicians that are considered artists to watch. They include Nigeria's Ira Starr, Mexican-American singer Danny Lux, Lynn Lapid out of Maryland in the U.S., Sad Night Dynamite out of Somerset, England, and the K-pop girl group Stacy out of South Korea. Apple TV Plus appears to be in the lead in acquiring a sought-after Formula One racing film. A piece from Deadline says the Cupertino streamer is in exclusive negotiations for the film to be produced by Top Gun's Jerry Bruckheimer, directed by Top Gun Maverick's Joseph Kaczynski, and starring Brad Pitt, who I'm pretty sure has nothing to do with Top Gun. Still, he is kind of a big deal. According to Deadline, Pitt will play a racer who comes out of retirement to mentor a younger driver and take his final stab at glory on the track as the younger driver's teammate. Sounds a bit like Days of Thunder, a movie about NASCAR which starred Tom Cruise, who, funny enough, is in Top Gun and Top Gun Maverick. Days of Thunder was also produced by Jerry Bruckheimer, making one wonder whether wonders will ever cease. If the deal goes through, it will be the second film for Pitt at Apple. Deadline says Apple acquired an untitled film that Spider-Man director John Watts will direct, with Pitt and George Clooney starring as two lone wolf fixers assigned to the same job. George Clooney, by the way, not in the Top Gun universe. Shake up in the Bonaparte house. A report from Deadline says Jodie Comer has dropped out of the Apple TV Plus film, Kit Bag. 
Directed by Ridley Scott and starring Joaquin Phoenix, the piece says Kit Bag is billed as an epic drama examining Napoleon Bonaparte's origins and his swift, ruthless climb to emperor, viewed through the prism of his addictive and often volatile relationship with his one true love. Comer was meant to play that love, Napoleon's wife Josephine. She's now bagged on the role, citing COVID-related scheduling issues, according to the report. Apple is said to be in advanced negotiations with a replacement. A separate piece from Deadline says pieces of a woman's Vanessa Kirby is being sought for the part. Whoever it is, a deal needs to happen soon. Back in November, director Scott said production on Kit Bag was set to start on the 15th of January. And finally today, Philip Michaels over at Tom's Guide has reviewed Apple TV+. Plus. Not the shows on the Cupertino streamer, but the streaming service itself. And there is one thing he really, really likes. Is it the low price? Is it the quality content? Is it Ted Lasso? None of the above. It is how easy the service is to cancel. In his review, Michaels writes... I think what I appreciate most about Apple TV Plus is how easy Apple makes it to leave the service behind. That's not a backhanded compliment, he continues. Apple is surprisingly upfront about when your Apple TV Plus subscription is about to auto-renew and gives you enough advance warning to do something about it. It's a practice I wish other subscription services, including the best streaming services, would take note of. Okay, that last part did sound backhanded. The rest of it really is praise, though. Quoting Michaels again, It's a remarkably canny move on Apple's part. Instead of luring someone in with a free trial and hoping that they don't bother to check a calendar, Apple makes it very clear that your trial's about to end, even if it means losing out on recurring revenue. That helps build trust and goodwill not just for Apple TV+, Plus, but for many other services Apple offers. And that more than makes up for any of the canceled subscriptions Apple will have to strike out off the books because of those email reminders. Also, he does like Ted Lasso. Michael figures he'll re-up once season three is out. Mac OS can, brought to you by me, and sponsored by Upstart. Fair and fast personal loans. Learn more and check your rate at upstart.com slash macOSCan. This show is also sponsored by Headspace. Meditation made simple. Get a free one month trial at headspace.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media online at backbeatmedia.com you can reach me a couple of ways info at macoscan.com or call 716-780-4080 until next time that is news from macos ken i'm ken ray Ciao.